Spring training is here. Pitchers and catchers officially reported for the New York Yankees today. And I had to talk to my man, Joel Sherman here. Joel, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, Ryan. Thanks for having me on here. And I appreciate you uh, coming on. And honestly, today, you know, hope springs eternal. Obviously, a lot of Yankees fans are hoping for the chase for 28. And today, a little bit of a darker news when Aaron Boone came out in his presser today and said Frankie Montas is going to get shoulder surgery. And Joel, I wanted to ask you straight up. We know we knew about this shoulder injury last October. And, you know, we had heard in the offseason that this had come back up as an issue for Montas. And then today we get the news he's going to get surgery. My question to you is, why is he now just getting the surgery when we knew about this injury back in October? Well, Ryan, you know, the, the great lies of spring are always everyone's in the best shape of their life and everyone is well ahead of their schedule when it comes to injury. I do think uh, that in general, fans think that injury is obvious. Uh and in some cases, you know, complete tears, breaks, et cetera, they are. I don't think that's true in all cases. Um, as recently as uh, four to eight weeks ago, uh, Montas saw both the Yankee team doctor, Chris Ahmad, and uh, a doctor his agent, Scott Boris, works with a lot, Neil Elitrash, who's one of the top surgeons in the country. And both, you know, he was still having discomfort, irritation. And they were like, OK, let's go. You know, there's nothing that's kind of blatant on the film here that would suggest surgery. Let's go through the a new throwing program and we'll reassess in another month. Well, we got to the next month and he still feel like he's throwing. And the question is, do you push through it because there's irritation there or do you have to do something else? The fact that he was still feeling something means that they're going to do a scope next Tuesday, the 21st. And look, in the best of all worlds, they probably find fraying of the like labrum. They smooth it out. And maybe the Yankees have a pitcher in the back end of this season. You know the horror story. They find a tear of the labrum, something with the rotator cup, in which case Frankie Montas, who's in his walk year for free agency, essentially never pitches for the Yankees again and just goes out into free agency as a coming off a significant shoulder injury, which is always problematic, even more so than Tommy John surgery for a pitcher. So I just think there are some regions that are a little cloudier. And I think that Frankie Montas has been operating in those regions. And the interesting part of all of this is obviously this was the big prize piece that the Yankees traded for last year before the deadline. And we haven't seen the returns. And my question to you is, can you judge this trade as ultimately a disaster when you ter- when you put in terms of what the Yankees gave up in prospects and the return that they've gotten so far in Frankie Montas? Yeah, unless Lou Trevino wins uh, like the Rolades Relief Award, uh, this is going to be a disaster. Uh, Trevino obviously being the other piece they got in this trade. In a lot of ways, Frankie Montas is the traded for version or the 2.0 version of Carl Pavano. He didn't pitch very well for the Yankees, but on the other hand, he hardly ever pitched for the Yankees because he was hurt all the time. And so that's bad. The fact that they weren't able to secure Luis Castillo at the trade deadline last year, because quite frankly, I think Seattle blew away the field by putting their two best prospects into the trade. I'm not sure the Yankees, even if they were willing to do both Volpe and Peraza, if they could have gotten him. But that was the other pitcher, by the way, a guy who missed time last year with a shoulder injury like Montas, but then came back healthy and helped Seattle get to the playoffs for the first time since 2001. And more important to the 2023 Yankees, that trade for Montas, like many trades over the last three years, included a lot of upper level starting pitching depth. Um, Luis Medina, J.P. Sears, Ken Waltichuk. And the Yankees have used a lot of their upper level starting pitching to get players, Jamison Tyon, Scott F. Ross, Joey Gallo. And now as Domingo Herman ascends to the number five starter and Clark Schmidt moves to the number six starter, you start wondering who's seven, eight, nine. That would have been some of these guys in trades. And so the question is, At this time last year, no one thought Nesta Cortez All-Star or J.P. Sears would be a very useful starting pitcher for the Yankees and someone they'd use in a trade. Does somebody from like the Randy Vasquez portion of the program who's in their upper minor leagues now really step out or do they need to go and find some depth? And that's going to be my follow-up question here is, 
when you're looking at this roster, I mean, we've already heard Nestor Cortez has a hamstring injury, and now this news of Frankie Montas. This rotation that we all looked at before the season, this could be a real strength for this team, all of a sudden takes two hits here. Do you see this as an in-house internal candidate to fill out the rest of this rotation, or could you see the New York Yankees and Brian Cashman making a move before opening day? Ryan, I hate to be self-reverential, or maybe I love it, but uh, <laughs> I, I hate uh, about two weeks ago for our Sports Plus at the New York Post, I wrote, I understand the fans all are jumping on Josh Donaldson and Aaron Hicks is the biggest problem with the team. The Yankees will not not win the division or not make the playoffs because of Josh Donaldson or Aaron Hicks. They have other internal ways to go. Uh, those players are more easily replaceable in the trade market. Uh, then starting pitching. I, even before we knew the full extent of the Montas injury, I, for the points I mentioned before, that they've traded so much starting pitching depth, thought that that would be the biggest area of concern because they were relatively healthy last year. But when you consider, you know, like Jordan Montgomery was part of that health. Now, I don't think they'd reverse it. I think they like having Harrison Bader in center field, but Montgomery was a guy you could rely on to show up every five days. Well, who do they have now? Cortez has had a bunch of lower half injuries now since the middle of last year. Lu Luis Severino has started 22 regular season games in the last four years. Before the last two seasons, Carlos Rodon could have been like a medical mm. journal for the number of injuries had. They do have a horse at the top in Cole. He's made the most starts in the major league since 2017. You know, if anything were to happen to him, you know, there'd be real issues. Uh, but I think that any real further dents in this starting pitching where guys miss more than like, look, everyone's going to have guys miss two weeks, two starts, three starts. But if we're suddenly talking about them having to backfill 10 starts, 12 starts, Severino has one of these half season injury situations. I think that's the problem. And it's why everyone could talk Brian Reynolds, Brian Reynolds, Brian Reynolds, but if you were asking me to go to Vegas right now, you're not, thankfully. If you were asking me to go to Vegas right now and say, which way would you bet on them making a trade at the deadline? Maybe they'll do what they usually do, multiple things, but they're going to end up needing a starting pitcher, right? Because what's the chances that all these guys get through uh, injury-free and or they get the best results out of the Montas surgery? So where they could feel like, hey, you know, maybe we have a trade mm. deadline guy. We on August 1st, August 15th, we get Montas back. So I do think it's the biggest area of concern by a good distance for the, this organization right now. And it's going to be something that a lot of Yankees fans are going to be watching all throughout spring training and how this develops. Joel, we thank you as always giving us your perspective and giving us some insight on all of this. Thank you as always, man. All right, Ryan. Thank you.